Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. So welcome to our first citizen science of the 2021-2022 school year. And we are going to be kicking it off with one of my favorite organizations, Audubon. Uh, I wanted to say just a couple of things to you uh, about, you know, here we are, where we are here at Gulf Coast State College. Uh, welcome to the, the Advanced Technology Center. Uh, hopefully you noticed as you came in our newly planted and very lovely uh, Zurich Garden out here on the rooftop. I just wanted to point that out. Hope you, guys, hope you guys appreciate that. One of the really lovely things about this beautiful building. Um, one other thing, uh, for your comfort, I want to make sure that everyone knows where the restrooms are. They're right through that door and around the corner. And the staircases are also located over there as well for safety. Uh, so uh, again, welcome back to Citizen Science. We have been doing Citizen Science here at Gulf Coast State College since 2012. Dr. Linda Fitzhugh kicked it off, worked really hard together with St. Andrew Bay RMA, uh, that's St. Andrew Bay Resource Management Association, now known as Baywatch. Um, so they are our partners uh, hosting this here at Gulf Coast State College for a variety of different citizen science endeavors, if you will. Uh, so tonight we're going to be having some uh, uh, our co-presidents of our local chapter, Bay County Audubon Society. We're going to have Ms. Lynn Marcou and Dr. Pan o Pam Overmeyer speaking to us tonight about avian and environmental conservation here locally in the Bay County area. Uh, and I would be remiss if I did, I did not also let you guys know about the upcoming Citizen Sciences. We are going to have one in October, October the 13th at 6 p.m. It's going to be about breast cancer awareness. This will be the first annual Bay Breast Cancer Awareness Symposium. And then we will also have another one in November, and we are going to have a guest lecturer. Is she a guest? She's one of our professors right here at Gulf Coast State College, Dr. Jessica Edwards will be talking about astrophysics. So without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, two of our uh, co-presidents of our local chapter of, of Bay County Audubon. Uh, we have Ms. Lynn Marcou. Lynn is, uh, has a background in marine biology, and she has a profound concern with conservation and preservation of our coastlines. And then we also have Dr. Pam Overmeyer, uh, really nice to meet you, Pam. Um, and so Pam has been an avid birder, I think you said forever. And now that you are retired from medicine, uh, she's a, a practicing physician. Uh, since 2017, she has plenty of time to bird and get involved with Audubon. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let Dr. Overmeyer, Dr. Overmeyer, take it away. Thank you. And thank you for having us here this evening. Anytime we can get out and, and talk to people about Audubon and getting involved in Audubon, we, we jump at the opportunity to do so. So, without further ado, let me check the quick here for me. So, uh, Professor uh, introduced us already. I'm Dr. Pam Overmar and she's Ms. Lynn Marcou. We, we have been president, co-presidents of Bay County Audubon. This is our second year now, and my third year as co-president, but the other co-president step down and now she's our recording secretary so which is actually more work so we are the co-presidents of, of Audubon I we share duties as far as running meetings and you know speaking to the public and things like that so we we both do pretty much the same thing although she's the the, the organized one of the of the two <clears throat> So what is Audubon? Uh, Bay County Audubon, obviously BCAS is the abbreviation. It's a, the local chapter of Audubon, Florida and of National Audubon Society that serves Panama City and the surrounding areas in Bay, Calhoun, Washington Homes, and Jackson County. Uh, so we cover a wide area uh, simply because there aren't local chapters in, in some of these smaller counties. So our current, our, our local organization was founded, now the first Audubon was founded around 1900-ish, somewhere around 1901, I think. So our local group is obviously not that old. It was founded in 1962. Ron, are you one of the original members? When did you get involved? 75, so he was a latecomer to the organization. 
1962, which is um, older than both Lynn and I. So, uh, but 1962, citizens were dedicated to the preservation of natural areas and wildlife habitat. habitat. And one of our primary goals is to increase awareness and therefore appreciation of wildlife and the natural habitats upon which the wildlife depends. Uh, this uh, local chapter has been a 501c3 not-for-profit organization since Ron got involved in 1975. Did you have anything to do with that? No, okay. So 1975, so some of you younger ones, that's still older than you, and some of you older ones, that's younger than you. All right, so we have, we have goals in Audubon, and we basically have the same goals each year, and we approve them because our goals really haven't changed. So one of our main goals is to support Audubon shorebird efforts. And we have local people that are with different organizations, either Fish and Wildlife Service, or Florida Federal Wildlife Service, or the, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, and they run some of, the, along with Audubon Florida, and they run some of the shorebird monitoring programs and including uh, rooftop monitoring of shorebird nesting. And we also offer programs to ed educate fishermen on how to treat accidentally hooked birds, specifically uh, gulls and brown pelicans, as you can see there, and how to re reduce entanglement of other coastal birds and other wildlife, such as the sea turtles and even, even dolphins. Um, so those are some of, our, some of our shorebird efforts. And these are some resting terns on the beach. And then these are brown pelicans to the right. We also want to foster preservation and restoration of wildlife habitat. You can't have wildlife if you don't have wildlife habitat. So in, instrumental in having the wildlife around is protecting where they live. And if you don't have places for them to live, you're not going to have the wildlife. So uh, we, our goal is to uh, provide advocacy for responsible land acquisition for conservation. So anytime the, the state wants to spend money to buy conservation lands, to take them out of development uh, process, then we're typically going to support that. We also want responsible development establishment of critical wildlife areas. Those are areas that are designated for wildlife that are not allowed to be developed in houses built on them or draining wetlands. Uh, coastal waterway protection, you know, pollution in our, our waterways, things like red tide. Not only do they affect the fish, they also affect the birds and the other uh, turtles and dolphins and other uh, wild, wildlife that, that depend on clean water to, to survive. Uh, we also um, serve on advisory and service committees in our state parks, so like the Friends of State Parks or when they do public comments for um, the, the plan to uh, rebuild St. Andrews State Park. We have members that participate in that to help give Audubon's uh, opinions on what we think is, is critical to do to not only allow for recreation, but to make sure the wildlife is protected too. Um, we also work with FDOT to preserve wildlife corridors. Anytime they want to build highways through sensitive areas, you know, we somebody's got to stand up and say, is this the right place to do this because this is bird nesting habitat? What's the most recent one in Walton County through Fort, uh, Point Washington State Park, I think, is the state forest. That's, that's one that we've been giving our opinions on. Sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. But, um, but somebody at least has to be the one to, to step up, and, and Audubon does, does a lot of advocacy for... Uh, protecting wildlife corridors when they want to build new highways around here. And I think Florida Audubon put in their opinion on the, uh, the new toll roads they wanted to, wanted to build in, in the Big Bend and through Central Florida. Uh, we also advocate for best conservation practices in our city and county parks, again, by meeting with city and county officials and helping guide them when they want to 
<clears throat> rebuild parks after Hurricane Michael damage and how to make it, again, not only for recreation, but also wildlife friendly, because you can have, you can have both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You know, and getting people out in these wildlife areas increases the chance that they're going to see wildlife. And the more you see of it, the more likely you are to like it and the more likely you are to protect it. So it all, it all ties together with preserving the, the habitat for, for our wildlife. So as Professor Carey had introduced me, um, I, I spent my career in marine biology. So I, I, we titled it Audubon Not Just for the Birds because what we want to relay today is that it's really anything and everything environment. And so I, um, my job in Rhode Island is I worked for the Audubon Society of Rhode Island and I would bring marine biology programs to the Audubon because we, we really want to protect all of our ecosystems. And currently here in Bay County, I am a high school science teacher. So education is very important because I, a, a quote that's driven me since I was young was to conserve what we love, we have to love what we understand, we understand what we are taught. And so education is very important. So we have this passion for the environment, but we want to share that and educate. So we do something like this every single month where we meet as an organization and we bring in different scientists and experts to share. So we are important um, maintaining the environment. We, we offer monthly membership meetings, but you don't have to be a member. You can just be a visitor and a guest. Um, and so every, every month it's a different topic. And again, it's not just birding, it's t all different environmental topics. And also, you know, things like this where we're coming on out giving community organizations we're presenting. We also go to our public libraries. Um, we'll attend, um, we have some of our members in our board actually instructing courses even here at Gulf Coast. Um, and we also are taking our education to all age groups, from young children all the way up to senior centers. There's, a lot to, there's lots that you can do. Even if you are confined to a senior living area, you have birds and you have the environment right around you. So we really are trying to make a connection with a, really all ages. Um, we are, over the past few years, we've developed a relationship with Covenant Christian School and also um, Bay District Schools. And so we're really trying to just kind of permeate getting those students outside, te getting them to take their science lessons outdoors, s put up some bird feeders, take them for nature hikes. Um, really, once you get those little eyes and those hands touching and feeling the environment, um, they get hooked and they, they love it. Um, the pandemic, that was a blessing actually because a lot of families around here, they're in their backyards, they were going outside. What are they doing with their kiddos? You know, they're starting to notice the birds. That was a lot of the feedback that we were getting. So we capitalize on that and really are trying to make that connection with the younger kiddos. Um, uh, I worked up at Audubon Society of Rhode Island this summer uh, teaching environmental programs and earlier you saw that I had a, a, an owl on my arm and so being able to, to take animals that have been injured by car strikes or um, an illness and being able to take them to schools and educate students and they can touch and feel and then they have an appreciation for how what, what their human impacts are so so we know the importance of education so we're bringing that down here with our bay county audubon society we're, we're trying to bring the environment to the school and bring the school out outdoors to the environment um, and we also have a really strong collaboration with all of the other different types of environmental organizations around here um, we all if you were to ask the board members we serve on multiple environmental organizations. Me personally, I also work with the sea turtles and the dolphins at Gulf World Marine Institute, and I'm on the Panama City Beach Turtle Watch. So we all cross over and we help each other out. So we are, and education is key and critical. It's an important part of our mission. So you can see here, um, something that's really important to us is increasing chapter membership. So my friends here, my my young adults, I'm excited to see you because we know 
it's important for us. Yes, we love, we love the environment. We know it's important. We're advocating for it. We're researching. But we have to make that connection with you and pass that baton so that you continue um, this mission and then you continue protecting the environment. So we have um, developed a volunteer program, an internship program, and you can see to an intern here. And we also have community service projects because a lot of high school students and college students may need some of those volunteer hours. And so we utilize any kind of need and we, we, uh, we connect with them and give them community service projects. Um, the gentleman here, he's actually holding a shorebird shelter. So the students were able to combine a multidisciplinary project and the students, the high school students built that. And so it was cool because it included woodworking and painting and arts and, and math. And then also to be able to build and have, have um, Audubon Florida staff set that out here on Panama City Beach for our shorebirds. It's something that they started with their hands and we we're able to actually see implementation on our beaches. And it really just empowers our, our younger leaders. So we're, we are really committed to making a connection with, with the youth. So obviously when the pandemic started, we all saw, saw nationally what happened and um, our awareness really was heightened under the guidance of National Audubon and Audubon Florida. They really challenged us as a chapter to step up as far as equity, diversity, and inclusion. What are we doing as a chapter to make the environment accessible to everyone? And so that really over the past year and a half, two years has really taken a priority. We've always had um, we've always been open and available, but now we're really trying to just um, make connections, make connections. So our, uh, our, our, this, this is our mission, this is where we're at. Bay County Audubon Society we w does not and shall not discriminate on the base of race, color, religion, religion, creed, gender, gender expression, age, national origin, disability, marital status, sexual orientation, military status, or any of the activities. So, really our goal is to be an organization where everyone is welcome and has a place with us. And so it's one thing to have that mission statement. It's another thing to actually be showing you that you're working that. So um, this is just a picture. So here, this is a project that we did um, early summer. Uh, and it, it, in, it was at Joe Moody Harris Park. And this is a city-owned park. And Unfortunately, this park was devastated by Hurricane Michael in 2018, and it was, it was on our radar because how do we make birding and other environmental org activities accessible? Well, sometimes you have to bring that to your families, to your friends. And so this park has been closed, and there really was not a lot of effort to clear that. And so there was some racist graffiti that was found there. And so the residents took action and Bay County Audubon Society, as well as um, Minority PC and other volunteers, or almost 100 volunteers actually in these efforts, um, worked to clean this up. So it's one thing to say that you have an EDI statement, but it's another thing to show that that's, that's an also an important part and an important component of Bay County Audubon Society and where we are and where we're going. So one of our other goals, of course, is conservation because we want to protect the things that we love. So part of our conservation efforts is actually recognizing uh, locals in the community who go above and beyond in their conservation efforts to whether it's for the beach cleanup or shorebird populations or uh, keeping Lake Powell clean. It, these are some of the, the, the recent winners on, on the left is Emily Ellis and she uh, runs the Lake Powell Community Alliance and organizes the Lake Powell beach cleanup and monthly sh uh, bird surveys at Camp Helen State Park. Uh, so if you want to join us on those, the, they're the last Saturday of every month, rain or shine, 6 a.m. at Camp Helen. You know, you got to get out there early for the birds. So, but every single month, and they've been doing that for 15 years or something like that. It's like 12 or 15 years they've been doing that, and they have fabulous data on tracking birds and bird species. And you see some other cool stuff out there. We've seen otters. We always see dolphins. Um, and where the outflow 
moves from Lake Powell, it, it moves back and forth. So just to see the ecology change based on what weather we've had recently is a really neat thing to do. And they've tracked that over years and years to see where it's at. I don't know if any of you are country fans, but Luke Bryan did a song, uh, that old beach roller coaster, and the video was filmed at Camp Helen. And that roller coaster that was in the background was actually the old pier that used to be there. And it's still there. And it's now in the outflow channel, at least the last time I was out there. And there's some rare birds that show up out there, so it's a neat, neat time to, to, to get out is, is with, the, shore, with the, uh, the bird survey at Camp Helen. So Emily runs that on the left. And then on the right, this is Joanne Weatherford. She, uh, organized, she created and runs Keep PCB Beautiful. And, is all, and she's also involved in, gosh, like seven or eight different organizations for conservation and cleanup and and, and basically, in any environmental group that's on the beach, I believe she's, she's had her finger in. Turtle Watch, she does something with Turtle Watch, too. Uh, so she was our conservation, uh, conservationist of the year this year, and, and then uh, this year? Yes, this year. We gave it to her in May, and then Emily's was last year. So we try to recognize people who are doing the things that we, we all should be doing. Uh, but some of, these, some of these people go above and beyond, and we like to recognize that. So other conservation, we have some preserves that we manage. This one is the M.F. Parker Audubon Preserve. It's at the north end of Cincinnati Avenue, where it dead ends just south of Lake Huntington. I put that on there because I have to admit, I didn't even know where it was. And I've been hearing about Parker Preserve for years, and Ron and Norm were always asking people to come help, and I'm like, I don't even know where this place is. So I finally found it, went out there and looked at it. It's basically a little parcel of land in a neighborhood that was donated by Audrey, Audrey Parker to National Audubon to basically keep it as a preserve so nobody else built a house on it. And it's just a little pocket park in, in this neighborhood. And the, the neighbors are, are very happy that we've cleaned it up and it's not you know, a place for <clears throat> people to be camping out and having parties and you know throwing trash out. So the Parker Preserve, and that's, that's the, I don't know what the actual address is, but that's the description of where it is. And these are some of Ms. Marcoux's students from Covenant Christian that, that regularly go out and help clean, uh, clean trash, uh, pick up debris. The hurricane cleanup was, was a, a major undertaking out there. And planting native plants. Because the thing with wildlife is if you have pretty plants that have no food, nectar, or really benefit to the wildlife, you're not going to have the wildlife. So this park uh, prides itself on being native plants that are wildlife friendly, specifically to attract more wildlife to the area. And it's a really, really neat little place to bird. We always see, see good, uh, good birds in there. Um, we need a water feature, though. That's the only thing, is we don't have water on the property. So if we had water there, I think we'd even have, have more. The generous neighbors allow us to use their, their water faucet. Our other preserve that we have is the Beulah A. Laidlaw Preserve, called Beulah Land. It is uh, 272 acres in Washington County. Uh, it's not too far over the, the line from, from Bay County. Um, it's up. Highway 79 before you get to Shipley or Vernon? Past Vernon before you get to whatever the next one is, Bonifay. Uh, so it's, it's not accessible to the general public because it's, uh, you have to cross private property to get to it, so the gate is, is locked, so you have to have one of the Audubon members or somebody with a key to get to it. Sometimes they haven't been so good about keeping it locked up and you can explore out there. Um, these preserves we have are on our website, so if you just were curious to look up more, you can, you can always see more. Now this, this particular property, the three signature species that it has that it supports in good number, the Swainson's warbler, the gopher tortoise, and the native flame azalea, those are actually the photos that are on the, uh, the sign that's, at, that's on the property. We've had Eagle Scouts and Boy Scouts uh, do some work out there, including building the photo blind and building the benches for the uh, picnic shelter we have out there. 
And then we also, also will have field trips. We like to uh, meet up with Choctahatchee Audubon because that's real close to them. And so they, they meet us out there. We have a work day cleaning trails and picking up debris um, or just field trips where we, you know, walk out and see what's there. And during, during migration, it's a really good time to get out to, to see what, what birds are coming through because there's a lot of, a lot of good land and a big, big pond there. So we end up seeing, we had wood ducks the last time we were out there and wood duck babies and that was the cutest thing. So community and relationships, how, how does Audubon meet with the people to get people interested in Audubon and birding? Well, we try to do community events and things that, you know, the community can participate in to, to get the word out that, you know, that birding is for everyone. It's not just for old retired people, I guess. I am one of those, though. But, but we like to have, you know, younger people get involved, too, because, again, the things that you love are the things that you're more likely to protect. So we do field trips. Some of our most popular field trips are at Panama City Beach Conservation Park. We had it two weeks ago, and we had a Merlin. And Merlins aren't around here often, and we had a Merlin out there that, of course, I found. <laughs> and during our January-February walk we have out there, the last two years we've had a vermilion flycatcher. Now, that may not mean much to you, but a vermilion flycatcher is a little red bird about this big that winters in Central and South America. But this one was in Panama City Beach, and we saw that one. So there's always some really cool birds out there. We actually have breeding populations of the black-bellied whistling ducks, which you don't see anywhere else around here but out at the conservation park. And the purple gallinules are, are breeding there. We see baby uh, purple gallinules out there, too. So it's, just, it's a really neat neat park and it, it serves a purpose for recycling the wastewater on Panama City Beach, but it's also an excellent wildlife uh, area and since the, the park has gotten more established and they've done regular uh, burns and, and keeping the, the place more natural, the, the wildlife has really, really moved in out there. I think we saw a snake the last time too, it was like a little ribbon snake or something. Um, so we do field trips, and the field trips can be, you know, local. They can be out of town. We like to go to St. Mark's or Port St. Joe and do some, some various ones. And we were kind of slowed down by the pandemic, but this year we're trying to get back, get back in it and, and, and do some more. Uh, we also do what's called the annual Christmas bird count. That's going to be Saturday, December 18th, 2021, where we break up into little circles, and everybody counts every bird in their circle. And it is... The, the record keeping on it is, is challenging, but, but it's also really cool to see because that's when the, the winter birds are down here. We also do a, a, a big backyard count. It's kind of an informal contest of the local birders to see who has the most birds in their backyard for a year. And I, I think Ron and Neil probably win it every year. It must be Neil. Yeah. And then Tom and Terry get some, some really cool ones in their yard too. Uh, so we also have a, a partnership with the Saint, Historic St. Andrews Waterfront uh, Partnership. Uh, they created a bird trail, and we provided the signs on some of the, some of the birds you would see in the area in St. Andrews. And then we also collaborate with other organizations that Lynn alluded to. These are just some of the ones that we are also involved in, either as members, board members, or volunteer days that we show up. So the Native Plant Society, uh, Bay County Conservancy, Panhandle Shorebird Alliance, Turtle Watch, Lake Powell Community Alliance, uh, Federal Wildlife Service, and Florida uh, Wildlife Conservation. So those are just the ones I could think of off the top of my head that, that we're involved in. And, and see Brian's here, so we had to throw his nature connection in there. We're doing another nature connection this year. We missed it the last, when was the last one? Year before last. We did it in... 20, right before, yes, February of 20. We, we, eat, we snuck it in right before, you know, heck broke loose with the pandemic. Uh, and we, so we skipped it this year because of the, the pandemic, and then we're starting it again next year. So tentatively scheduled for around April the 1st. It may be a, a few days before and after. We're going to have about a week's worth of activities. And this year the presentation is going to be Noah Stricker. Who, cre who completed his world bird trek, also called a big year in 2015, where he set the world record when he saw and recorded 6,042 species of birds. He birded 
every single day for one solid year to find that many, that many birds. And that's him doing a penguin survey in Antarctica. Yeah, that was, and he also likes to go to Antarctica and do penguin surveys too as part of his, part of his job. So he, he leads a, a pretty interesting life. You can tell he's young. So be prepared for the nature connection in spring. We, we have it out here. Are we having it out here again? The Holly Center? We, over there? Okay. That one over there. So we're going to have it out here. So y'all y'all look for that in the spring because we were trying to get Gulfport to let us borrow a penguin for the evening, but I don't think they're going to let us do that. So, But that would be so cool. Oh, excellent. He's got a, a thing here, and we're going to be in some of the schools and then some bird walks and things with him. So, And if you've never heard of him, just Google his name, and he's written, what, three or four books now? How many? Five books now? And he, he's a really, really interesting guy, and we, we Zoomed with him not too long ago to, to get his, his take on it. He, he's going to be a really, really interesting uh, because his, his talk is going to be on his, his, is it just on penguins or is it going to be his whole big, big year thing? Okay. I'm not sure we can ask him about his big year. I don't think he still has the record, though. I think somebody since him has broke his record, but I don't know. So how do you get involved? Well, the first thing you can do is come bird with us. We love to have people bird with us. You do not have to be an experienced you know, 30-year birder with the most expensive binoculars to come on these walks with us. We get families with kids. We get tourists that are down here. We get actual people, snowbirds, that come with us. Even if you've never picked up a pair of binoculars in your life, come with us. You know, we, you know, we like to look at bluebirds, and I don't care if it's a rare bird or not. Anytime we see birds or get people to looking at birds and seeing birds in a new light, you know, that, that's our goal. And I always get excited when I see a bird out there that's cool and I end up kind of squealing and they're like, you gotta be quiet and I can't. And I don't care how many times a bald eagle flies over, I'm gonna go, oh look, an eagle. I've seen, I don't know, probably a thousand by now, but I'm gonna yell every time I see one. Uh, and we want y'all to have that same kind of enthusiasm when you see a bird you've never seen before or it's the 700th time you've seen it. You know, it, it's cool to see them. So our next, uh, uh, the, is the Camp Helen Bird Survey, 6 a.m., Saturday, September 25th, at Camp Helen. You better be there at 6 o'clock or the gate will be locked. Now, also on the 20, 25th, we're actually having a bird walking program at Seven Pines Native Nursery in Defuniac, and Dara Dobson, this is kind of her swan song, I guess. She's retiring and either selling or closing the place, so she, this is our last walk with her and I walk through her property to see her birds, and of course she's going to have her native plants for sale too. So that's a that's a great opportunity to find some plants on clearance because she's she's going to be clearing them out. And then our next uh, big walk is going to be October 16th uh, in the St. Joe Cape San Blas area. We'll have a picnic lunch. We'll bird in the area and go out to Cape San Blas. Are we going to the buffer preserve or just around or? part of the St. Joe. Okay, there you go. So, and so we try to make a big day of it. Uh, and all of these things will be on our Facebook page, our website, and our newsletter, and meet up if someone would do the meet up. <clears throat> How else can you get involved? Well, come learn with us. Our next uh, membership meeting is October the 11th. Now, our meetings are the first Monday of the month, or second month, second Monday of the month, 6.30 p.m., and we meet at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. That's the address there. This next one is going to be Jim Moyers. That's him in the green there, the big guy. He's doing the presentation on Panama City Beach Conservation Park, what its purpose is, what wildlife we've seen out there. How many species are we up to now? Norm usually keeps track of that, somewhere around 150 or 60, something like that. And almost each time we have a bird walk out there, we, f we add a new species. We got wood storks for the first time in the spring with one of our, with one of our walks out there. And of course, the vermilion flycatcher. Uh, the bobwhite quail, uh, I saw Arnold had posted that. So there's, there's quail out there now, which is, which is a new thing. 
and the uh, black belly whistling ducks have been there for a few years, but they're, uh, we have um, hairy woodpeckers. The, about the only place you can find a hairy woodpecker around here is at Conservation Park, and we added that one, I think last year, whenever we saw a couple out there. And it looks like they have a breeding population because we saw, I think, six or seven of them or something. Um, so that's our next next meeting. And again, the, the second Monday of each month, uh, the November talk is going to be, I can't remember what off the top of my head. Is that going to, it's which one? Oh, Fred Bassett, the Hummingbird Bander. Oh, man, he gives an excellent talk. I saw him a few years ago, and he's going to be uh, doing a, a talk on banding hummingbirds and the, the cool hummingbirds we have in this area. And speaking of which, if you have hummingbird feeders, get them out because they're, they're coming through now, and they're fighting over them, so get your hummingbird feeders out, and you might see some of the unusual hummingbirds that come through the area. All right, how else can you get involved? Well, come work with us. Our next work day at Laidlaw, we do a, a, a combined event with Choctahatchee. Um, that's the Laidlaw Preserve, uh, 9 a.m. at the gate, or we carpool from the Porter Park in Lynn Haven. Uh, again, on our Facebook page, our web page, and in our, in our newsletter. Uh, the preserves always could use a helping hand. If anybody wants to help plant some stuff or do some cleaning, you know, Ron, you know, is working on Parker Preserve, and Neil does Laidlaw Preserve, and we are always needing extra hands and bodies to do that. So if you needed a class project or um, any of the schools that need to, to get some volunteer hours in, these are some, some good ways to do it. And... <laughs> I personally am looking for someone to start and maintain a bluebird trail. So if anybody's interested in that, hit me up afterwards. Um, I'm also a board member for the Florida Bluebird Society, and somebody had a bluebird trail, and they just decided they didn't want to maintain it anymore. So they pulled up all the boxes and gave them to the Florida Bluebird Society, and I ended up with them. So I've got about 15 or 16 boxes that need to go up. I'm looking around here, I'm like, I think the college needs a bluebird trail. So if any of y'all are interested, I've got some boxes and we can, we can, we can set, set you up. Um, we're also always in need of board members and officers each year too. So getting involved through the organization, if you do want to have some leadership roles, we have them available. And openings right now, historian, so if anybody likes to do digital scrapbooking, we've got that available. Um, social media, uh, our, our web, web design, uh, meet up all of our social media accounts. We really could use somebody, especially tech savvy, that would like to do that. So if you you know anybody or any of your friends are interested in in, in getting involved, even if it's just a matter of running the web page and doing the Facebook page and the and the meetup stuff, we we've got we've got slots for you. So all right. So these are our contact information. Um, we try to get to you any way that's possible. Feel free to take a picture of it. Uh, these aren't clickable links. They were, and they kept messing with me, so I made them not clickable. So baycountyautobahn at gmail.com. Uh, that's a few, few different people answer that. Uh, our webpage, baycountyautobahn.org. Um, it's currently being updated as the new webmaster tries to figure out how to do a web page. Um, but I figured it out, but I really, if somebody wanted to do it, I would, I would, you know, teach you how to do it. Uh, Facebook page, uh, we have an Instagram account, and then through Meetup, uh, when we have meetings and, and field trips, we, we put them on Meetup. See, I got the web page and she got the Meetup. So, so once we figure out how to get that one going too. So... So those are our contact information, so feel free to, to let us know if you're interested uh, or hit us up afterwards, and if there's anything you'd like to do or any questions, we would be happy to answer them for you. <laughs> any questions for us? Because... that bird that you saw and you don't know what it is and but just describe it and we'll tell you what it is my favorite bird um, is actually a bluebird so you know I I started I, I had my first bluebird nest about 15 years ago and it was just amazing to see these beautiful blue little birds and they chose my yard to raise a family so I ended up 
starting a bluebird trail. So I, I have 27-ish, 28 boxes that I met, met monitor. And so if you ever go out to uh, Harders Park out in Bayou George and around the old Majet, um, well, it was Bay Dunes Golf Course. It's now called Majet Park where the uh, uh, Frisbee, fr ultimate Frisbee courses. If you notice, there are bluebird boxes out there. Those are mine. And so I have anywhere between two and 300 uh, babies fledge each year amongst all my boxes. So, because they'll have, they'll start in, my earliest nest was in January and then they go through August. So the, the bluebirds are, are my favorite and I ended up in uh, the Florida Bluebird Society as a board member. I don't know how they roped me into doing that, but I'm in that now too. It's a good thing I'm retired. So yeah, bluebirds. We should do it. I, I've got the boxes. I just need bodies to, to help me help me do them. So, yes. So here's my question. I'm not sure. Oh, yes, yes. Lynn. Dolphin, yeah, right. No, um, and osprey, because they hang by the sea. <laughs> and they, yeah, so um, I just love them. They're beautiful. And um, we have several osprey right in my backyard, so I just, I love seeing it, and I love being by the water, and just, yeah, so osprey. <laughs> so I'm going to ask a question. Um, so we have a project in Panama City Beach. It's an outfall project for uh, discharging stormwater, and I just was curious if you had any uh, opinion on that either way or have read any of the literature on how that could possibly affect the shorebirds specifically. read enough about it um, anytime they start you know digging up sand and moving stuff you always have to be concerned about not only the birds but the turtles too but some of the outflows over there dump somewhat polluted water from these inshore lakes from neighborhoods and, and, and uh, stormwater drains and you know, the water's brown because of the, uh, the stuff in it, the tannins, not necessarily because it's polluted, but when we have a lot of rain and they pop out, we always end up with a lot of E. coli in the water and the swim advisories and all. So I'm suspicious that if they put those further out, there may be less shore effects and because it, it may be diluted once you get it further out. And if they can do it when the birds aren't nesting and the turtles aren't nesting, then obviously that would be the safest time. So I, without having read up on it, my gut, is, my gut feeling is that moving the outfalls further out in the water will probably actually be beneficial to the water quality, which is then beneficial to the wildlife. And if y'all have ever been out there and seen people swimming in those things, you just look at them and go, get out of those. You don't know where that water's coming from. And the next day there'll be an... E. coli swimmers alert, you know, mm-hmm, there you go. So, so that, that would be my thought on it. Did you have any? The only other thing I would say is, is that we're newly starting the St. Andrews and St. Joseph's Bay program um, being hosted at FSU. And so with that program, I know that they're, they're going to be embarking in a lot of research on our waterway. And so making decisions um, based on science really sounds where it's going. And so just collecting that data. And also the nice thing is, is that the, the, the officials, the elected officials are partnering. So the scientists are explaining what they're seeing and then they're hopefully gonna work together to make the improvements for our bay. And then ultimately that impacts our birds and the, you know, the fish. So I'm encouraged by the new program here. We've desperately needed it. And I, I think it's going to address what, what your, what your, some of your concerns, I'm hopeful. I just want to say by finishing, absolutely, I'm very much aware that the Council on Panama City Beach is actively uh, searching for information to make sure that they make the right decision. I do want to say that. Did you want to say something, sir? Do you guys do much um, coordination at all with Cornell, their lab there, their ornithology lab there? We don't have any formal um, partnerships with Cornell, but informally, 
we, we submit to eBird and we use All About Birds and a lot of their resources, but as far as an actual formal partnership, no more than what Florida Audubon does and what the National Audubon does, and they, they have some partnerships with them. But us, as a local group, mainly we just use their resources and donate to them every year. So, yeah, all about org, uh, allaboutbirds.org is an excellent resource. They also have a free app for your phone. That's the only reason I got a smartphone. I, I admit, I, I've only had a smartphone for about four years. It was before the hurricane, so four years because my flip phone didn't have apps on it. And so now I have like five birding apps. Um, so that was the only reason I got a smartphone is so I could have birding apps. So I love my flip phone though, it was great. So yes, but yeah, we, we use their resources and a lot of us contribute you know, as, as donors to the organization. And thank you for having us. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation. We really appreciate you delivering that to us. And we, I really do hope that you guys will get involved <clears throat> with our local chapter of Audubon. Uh, I'm trying to think, how can, other than going to uh, the website, it's going to be, say the website. BayCountyAudubon.org. I didn't want to mess it up baycountyaudubon.org. All of the great information that was shared with you this evening can be found there. And I also wanted to, thank you, um, I also wanted to say a shameless plug for one of the organizations also mentioned, Bay County Conservancy. It's a land trust here in Northwest Florida. And I want to total, I do not want to steal any of your thunder, or any of your volunteers or anything like that, but we also are all looking for volunteers for a variety of different projects. We are also even looking for a preserve manager, a hired position. So uh, please, if you are interested in doing this, basically the type of work you were talking about, uh, feel free to contact me or look up baycountyconservancy.org. Um, so the preserve manager is indeed a paid position, yes. Um, so uh, once again, a sorry, shameless plug. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much for coming out this evening. We really appreciate everyone being here. <laughs>